My name is Pedro Souza. I work for XDev Studio Europe. Um, our job is to work with external studios and uh, kind of help them, helping them uh, developing the game. So they'll be doing all the development work and will basically take care of, of everything else in, in the publishing side. Um, so I've been working with Supermassive Games for, for a while now and um, it's a studio that, that has been uh, working, doing a lot of work in VR. Um, so they released uh, Russia Blood last year. They released also Tumble VR, yeah. and now they have um, um, the Impatient and Bravo Team uh, coming um, for VR as well. Well, VR is something that that the company has been has been studying and developing for a long time, as as you probably know. Uh, or even though it's only been out for for a couple of years, not even. But uh, it's something that it's been it's been working on. So we did a lot of research. We did a lot of work on it, um, and it's it's uh, something we believe in, and and uh, our developers uh, believe in. Uh, so that helps it helps to have their support mm -hmm. on that one. Um, for us, is uh, in comparison to other companies, I guess, is a bit easier in the sense that we already have an ecosystem. We already have the PS4 that's able to support the the VR structure. So it's easier for people to. Uh, to get to it after until long which was a great success and uh, and the studio decided to explore vr because because it's such an exciting opportunity uh, so they actually started with russia blood which was uh, which is also tied into uh, to until dawn uh, but which uh, it was a different experience it was more of a shooter on rail shooter PS4 for the and then it's it was just a natural step to explore explore VR and explore the the until dawn um, angle a bit more because it was very well received to the players and and it is the perfect suit for VR because it's horror so it can provide really strong feelings really strong excitement and um, and all the the branching and the decision making that you have in until dawn if you put it on a vr game basically you have this amazing interactive story that can be very um, exciting and very scary at some points mm -hmm. and you also have the decision making that allows you to feel that you're actually there and you're making your own story and you're making your own decision let's test your memory do you remember who i am do you know why you're here, I'd like to try it again. I'm going to ask you again. Do you remember me? It's just a nightmare. Got him! No! Get me out of this! Try to visualize the last thing you can remember before you came here. You understand I want what's best for you. Get your booty on home to me! 
this case it's more of like a atmospheric f a horror like very thriller uh, maybe you won't have as many jump scares as as uh, until dawn had but it's it's very very intense and it's also interesting because um, jump scares also rely on for example something that the player is looking at or a position they are in in vr it's just something you cannot control so mm. whilst whilst in a regular game you can know exactly if the player is looking at something in vr is a bit is a bit more difficult to uh, to have that kind of control of over what the player is doing well the, the reaction is is always really good i mean every time we are at these shows like games call me three and there's always people that they're trying vr for the first time and it's really amazing to see their reactions and see how, how well they receive it and how amazed they are by it. It's a, it's a new technology that is still giving its first steps, but, um, but I think it's been improving a lot in, uh, in this even this short, short development cycle. And, uh, and it, it's, it's interesting to see how people react to it and how, how they embrace it. And uh, um, the reactions are always very positive and they, they really enjoy it. Part of our plan is, uh, is uh, as you have with other areas of PlayStation, like the PlayLink, is also part of our plan to open PS4 to uh, new audiences and, uh, and VR is also part of its family friendly experience like the diving one. It's, it's, you don't need to be a hardcore gamer, you don't need to play shooters, you can just enjoy. Mm -hmm. And so it's also part, part of that initiative that, that we have as a company. My first VR experience, well I've worked with a lot of uh, prototypes, so it was probably a prototype. I think they are, they are different areas and uh, they're all, they all are very interesting. Um, I think racing is an interesting area for VR because it feels so natural that you are in a, like in a position exactly as, as you are sitting and as if you're holding holding the wheel. It's it is interesting. One of the areas that, that we're still t trying to, uh, to crack open is, uh, is the, the shooter area and the action games because of the, the challenge involved with the movement and so that's why I think Bravo Team it's, uh, is quite interesting in the way that, that is trying to uh, prove but to try to find new ways to uh, get the traditional shooter experience to a VR, a VR community that, that can be uh, played by everyone else. Bravo, can you confirm you're receiving me? Over. No, I'm not getting anything. They can't hear us. We're on our own. Hostiles moving on your position. Watch your flank. Okay, enemy's ahead. All right, you ready? Engage. Cover me. So the story behind Bravo Team is uh, the game starts, so the, the sequence you played is that the game starts when you are escorting a president of uh, a fictional Eastern European country and you are escorting this president and um, all of a sudden your, your convoy is under attack. Um, so everyone dies on your, on your squadron, it's, it's, uh, only you and your, and your teammate are the, the only uh, uh, surviving ones. And, uh, and the president has been kidnapped. All right. So, and the story unfolds through there as you are in this foreign country that is uh, going through what it seems to be a rebellion. Um, and you're just trying to survive, basically. There are a few twists and turns along the way, but I'll leave, I'll leave that for, for you guys to, uh, to discover. Even though it is, uh, it is designed with a, with a co-op in mind, you can actually play it single player and you play with an AI, AI partner. So you have a full narrative with a full story um, and that story can be played on your own or, or a co-op online. You can join a session and, and play with anyone, anyone great, in the world. Um, I think it's good how, how it brings people together and, and when we come to these shows uh, you always, it's always really good to see how people react when they see someone else 
uh, just next to them and they can actually interact and speak and like oh yeah. right I can see your body and everything so it's very interesting and I think it transmits something uh, uh, really different to, to VR. The, the PS VR, the headset, it has a, a microphone incorporated in there. So it's picking up from, from that mic. So um, VR is something that, that we keep betting on and it's, it's, uh, it's a future we believe in. I want what's best for you.